overview, uh, 2009, we're going to start this off with, uh, you know, GSP versus uh, BJ Penn, the uh, grease match where, you know, <laughs> BJ Penn was complaining after the fight that GSP was all greased up. That's the reason why he got out of all the moves and whatever. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I can kind of understand what he's saying because uh, Dana kind of elaborated on the interview a little bit. And, you know, you know, it's not a rag on Dana blog, but uh, I think basically... Uh, can we do one of those? Can huh? we do one of those? Right yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it was more of a thing where uh, the trainer was doing it, you know, the, the coach or whatever trainer was doing that on um, GSP, because that's basically what Dana said. There's an interview, we're going to, uh, probably any second now. If it was anything else, with alcohol or drugs or him doing stupid shit, I'd be the first one to come down on him. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like George St. Pierre. I don't think George St. Pierre cheated, but I'm going to fucking tell it like it is. The guy rubbed fucking Vaseline on him. Mm -hmm. End of story. Mm -hmm. but, but if that's the case, then why didn't... Uh, BJ Penn get further with his case. You know, that's the question, really. Yeah, it seems like all these guys have got these big egos, man. When they do act, when they do lose, there's always going to be an excuse. You know, oh, look, yeah. at, look at BJ, yeah. look at Tito. Oh, yeah, Tito Ortiz. You know, you know. you know. I cracked my skull. I have blood fighting with a cracked skull. Yeah, you can boo. Ooh. Go ahead and boo. We're going to uh, move on to, um, what was it, uh, UFC 95? Oh, yeah, Koscheck, Paulo yeah. Diego. Awesome win for Paulo Diego because, I mean, that guy's just got bricks for hands, man, totally. Yeah. You know, Knox Koscheck's freaking block off. No, I didn't see that coming. We're going to talk about Koscheck a little later on where we yeah. finally think that he, you know, turned a corner a little bit. But at this fight, it, I don't know if he digressed or what, but, yeah. you know, you set him back a little bit. You know, you know Evan's kind of cocky. He comes in there with a little swagger. You know, he's from yeah. the drama show. You know, basically yeah. when Machida came in here, he knocked his ass back to the drama show. Back to the reality show, in my yeah. opinion. Because it was total domination. He timed him well, and at the end, he ended it. He talked a lot of crap. He did get really cocky. And yeah. he got put in his place. Yeah. So. For sure. And that, that, was, that was an awesome knockout, man. Awesome knockout. You know, UFC 99. It's going to be Crow Cop versus... Uh, Mustafa Al-Turk. Yep. The, uh, the uh, ever-famous eye poke. <laughs> <laughs> that that picture was like around the world. Yeah, you might be able to touch on that a little bit more. You know, yeah. no, that wasn't really all that great of a showing on uh, Krokov's part, man. Really, I mean, he was fighting well, but he was fighting with a guy that you know, I mean, Mustafa Al Turk. I mean, who the hell is that? That's that's like Krokov fighting Osama bin Laden. I mean, what's, what's the difference? I mean, I don't know, but I don't, I don't know anything about Mustafa Al Turk before that fight or before the fight before that. I mean, you know, that was the fight that uh, Krokov was coming off the loss to Gonzaga, I believe. Won't quote me on that, but uh. I don't know, man. I just think Krokov's towards the end of the road here, man. Yeah, you know? I think I think his best days was they were in pride, yeah. you know. They're definitely and, far behind him, yeah. And Dana, you know, once again, Dana, he might be um, signing a lot of these rehash, you know, fighters. You know, Vanderlei. Vanderlei yeah. is definitely on the end of his career. His best days were in pride. I don't want to be know? too disrespectful, but on that note, Coleman. Coleman, yeah. Coleman's on his way out. But you know what? Like you were saying, you know, way back, you know, with the senior league, and I mentioned this in a blog the other day. Dana ought to put on a senior league, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's perfect for these guys, and he's doing it, too. Sponsored by Werther's and Depends. You know, like <laughs> a hover-round commercial could be fit in there, you don't know. But uh, this is a big year for Strike Force. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, this is the year where they can, they signed, they got Emelianenko, and they got Fedor Emelianenko, Lashley. and they got Lashley, they got Hendo, yeah. and, you know, Henderson. I know Conley just lost, champions. but, you know, still. Yeah, Scott Smith ain't no joke with. either. You know what I mean? Exactly. Scott Smith is in with him, and he, he ain't no joke. He's trying to get around that whole thing to where he's, you know, a come from behind fighter. He's trying to get around all that. He's doing what he can to, to change that. But you know, you might have to fault um, Strike Force for some of the picks, like maybe like a Herschel Walker coming up, because I think Herschel Walker might actually get his ass kicked. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But uh, Herschel Walker made a good point because Dana White kind of dissed him a little bit, and Hall, Herschel Walker in an interview said, you know, Dana's kind of frightened because he's not the only gig in town anymore. You know. Yeah. You know, yeah. you got you got Strike Force out there, and they're signing some people, like we're saying. That's fucking awesome, man. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> he, he kind of, you know, he I don't he might get his ass kicked, but he's sticking up for himself. He's sticking up yeah. for his company. Yeah. You know, yeah, totally. really. And it's kind of like he's got the football player mentality. You stick with your team. You know, you stick with your players. You stick with your team. Somebody's going to come talk us some crap. You're going to back him up on 10%, you know. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on here. We're going to move on to uh, the KO of the year. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We, we on, both already know. know what this one is. The mouth got <laughs> shut, basically. The mouth got yeah. shut, so shut. And since after that, we've seen some humbleness, you know. Yeah, we've seen well, some yeah he's back onto his own crap again too, and I'll, I'll get into that in a second. He said everything in the book about knocking out Dan Anderson. You know what? I, I knew it. I, I, you know, I'm not gonna say I knew it, man. I had a great feeling that Dan Anderson's gonna smoke him. And you know, I was just saying. Like, you know what, Dana has to, to, to face facts here and put him up against somebody that is a worthy yeah. opponent. P 
period, man. You have to put this guy in with somebody. He's talking so much trash. Everybody wants to see it. Put it on. It finally happened. Well, what happened? One punch knockout. Oh, he one, brought that motherfucking one punch, in. One, not, yeah, not even, uh, no contention whatsoever. And you know what? Cold. And when he and when he knocked him out, the great part was he followed it up with the hammer fist. You know, Beautiful. The hammer fist Beautiful. put the, the cherry on the ice, the, the Sunday. He came back and he beat Kang. You know, later on in the year, we're not going to talk about that because it was just a joke of a fight. It wasn't even a fight. Kang did well, you know what I mean? But it, it wasn't not nearly good enough to take out of Michael Bisping. Yeah. So it obviously wasn't that great. Uh, and Bisping was humble after the... Uh, Hendo knockout, and he was a little bit humble uh, after the, uh, excuse me, after the uh, Kang fight, but now, now that in 2010, and we're not supposed to be talking about this, but I'm going to do it anyway, now that he's fighting Vanderlei Silva, he's uh, saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat him, uh, or I'm going to beat him by showing him no respect. So he's basically disrespecting the guy. What's the same thing he did with Dan Anderson? He didn't respect Dan Anderson at all. So, sure. you know, and I'm not saying Vanderlei Silva's going to knock him out, so I think Vanderlei Silva's just about oh, at the end of the road. Freaking three sheets. sheets. He's done. <laughs> three sheets. He's, he's about at the end of the road as any other, you know, 40-plus-year-old fighter. And he's not even in his 40s yet, so what does that tell you? And if he does take out a Biz Bang and knock him out, or what? you know what, man? Awesome, man. More power to you, you know, because it's happened. You know, it's happened before. You know, this time he came back. You know, last fight, he came back. <laughs> it was fine, but any substantial fighter that he comes against, he's probably going to get knocked out again, but... Yeah. Okay, now we're going to move on to the Lesnar Muir UFC 100. We call it the uh, Jelly Donut fight, you yeah. know, for Muir. Yeah, especially. I'm going to put this picture up here real quick. Um, this picture right here. Hey, Dana, I know who ate all the jelly donuts. It's this guy right here. <laughs> that's a little uh, comment we made way back in July when it was going it on. It stuck. <laughs> and it stuck really well. We've been talking about it on the page that we got. Well, you're talking about Muir put on more, he put on more muscle mass, you know. Yeah. He is going to, for that. That he that must come fight. in the same weight. Yeah. He must come in the same weight for what? What obvious reasons? That might be know? good or that might be bad because it might slow him down. You know, other fighters have trouble with adding weight. But at the same one, time, he put Congo out with one punch. Oh yeah, too. Yeah. And I actually oh. thought that Congo standing toe to toe with Congo with Congo this would be a bad idea for Mir. Well, having a Muay Thai background would do good with Mir, but shit, man, that was a damn joke. I'll not, like you said, I'm now. Congo's done. I'm no, done. I, I'm done. I, yeah. yeah. I, I've, I've said this a couple times already, man, and I, I, I am fucking through with Czech Congo, man. I am done. Yeah. I, I'm never going to bet on that guy again. And if he does win, cool, you know, man, because I'd like to see it happen, but you know what? I, 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 I'm not in this corner anymore. No. Well, back in the day, man, with the movie clinches and the knees and the elbows, mm -hmm. he went down to the ground. He wasn't worth a crap. We thought maybe he'd improve on that. Uh, oh, crap, man. he didn't improve on that. He digressed in the freaking stand-up game. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> that's, that's basically yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're going to move on to uh, UFC 101. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, Forrest Griffin, you know, disrespecting the fans after he got his ass beat oh, wow, yeah. by Anderson Silva. After the fight was over and after he got his ass beat, yeah. he just disrespected the fans, not giving them any explanation what happened to him that night, and just ran out of the cage. You know, man, man, I, I totally thought, I totally thought that, that was going to be the kind of match where, okay, he's at least at least going to take it to him for a little bit before yeah. he gets caught. You know, but I mean, I mean, what was it? Barely into the first round, yeah. he gets caught. And I, I mean, it was just, it just really just goes to show that. Our, our talk of way back when about the ultimate failures yeah. is true, man. I mean, really, everybody that's brought in on this TV show. Yeah, some of these drama select, stars. Yo. There's a select few that are, really, are really that good. Yeah, progress. I'm not yeah. saying that, you know, I'm not saying that Griffin is an absolute failure, but... No, oh, I see a better Tito. Okay, we're going to move on here. Um, Todd Duffy versus uh, Haig. You know, I, ex I, I obviously expected a little more of a toe-to-toe -to -toe match, but it just yeah. came out and it was like, boom, drop, and, and you know... That's done. And then, and then everybody, there was such a, a huge talk about Todd Duffy on, all over the net, man. Everybody's talking about this guy. Talk, you know, this guy here is the new guy. He's the new knockout record, which is, I'll say it again, it's like the third time in blogs, and I'm saying it again. Dwayne Ludwig is the real shortest knockout. Todd Duffy has been all over the internet about what he's going to do at UFC, but in recent times, which there was a lot of speculation. A lot of people were talking about, well, you know, Todd Duffy's, you know, got some, some time in school. He's got to finish. He's got to do the, the school thing and whatnot. It's like, dude, you've just had your first fight in the UFC in July. 